Contrary to your program, I am not Scott Stuhl, the director of Philbrook. I'm Jeff Martin. I work in the communications department at Philbrook. Scott is going to be taking the duties for this evening's event. Um, but we're very excited to be here and thrilled to be honoring the late, great Charles Bell, class of 1953. Um, this is our 80th year as a museum at Philbrook. We opened in... Uh, uh, officially became a museum in 1938, the museum opened in 39. So we've been around for a long time, and you'll see in your program here, uh, Charles Bell credited coming to the museum as a, as a kid to our art camps, to our classes, as one of the reasons that really got him excited about art as a young person. And it's really cool to see the lineage of that. You know, that's still happening to this day and multi-generational uh, and that impact. Um, so last year we opened a show called Museum Confidential. And this show was all about how do museums work behind the scenes. And we thought it would be fun to go into our vault. We have this vault under the, under the underground where we hide all the cool art and stuff. <laughs> and uh, all, museums only show about 5% of what they ever have at any given time. So we thought, well, how can we show stuff that's never been seen or has rarely been seen or hasn't been seen for a long time? So we put together this show. And one of the things we want to do is have this giant salon wall with just hundreds of pieces that had been in our vault. It's actually called art storage, but it sounds way cooler if we call it the vault. Um, and so one of the pieces down there was a piece that we referred to quite often as the giant clown. But it's actually not called the giant clown. It's called Lullaby. It was a piece in 1983 by Charles Bell. And so we put that up on this giant salon wall, and it is quite striking. Um, and it really plays to what Charles Bell was known for, this photorealism, this style where he would take things, these whimsical items like toys and pinball machines and marbles and, yes, clowns, and turn them into these beautiful, very strikingly realistic portraits, paintings. And so people have loved it. It's become kind of the signature piece of this show, which is still up now through May 6th. You can go see Charles's work there, this, this beautiful piece. But I will say this, not everyone loves clowns. <laughs> There's actually a, a, a diagnosable phobia of clowns <laughs> called coulrophobia. Some of you may have this, or you may not know it. Or you may get it when you go see this giant clown. Um, so Charles Bell moved uh, to New York City in 1967. You know, this is during the summer of love. He could have easily gone to California, but he moved to New York City. And since everyone's kind of doing Will Rogers quotes today, I thought that would be an appropriate one to say, you know, that famous quote where he talked about uh, the Okies leaving to California, and he, they raised the IQ level of both states when they left. <laughs> um, so there was a very famous curator and a critic named Henry Geldzahler. He was kind of one of the, if you look on the Mount Rushmore of curators of the 20th century, he's the guy who basically brought abstract art to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in the 1960s. You know, he's the one in the 50s, rather, in 60s. You know, he's the one who brought people like Jackson Pollock into the Met. And the Met at that point had been, you know, very much what you think, you know, uh, Roman antiquities and, 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 you know, impressionism and all these things. And so the idea of having someone bringing, you know, abstract art into the museum world was very different. And Henry Geldzahler now is seen as this giant of, of the art world. Well, Henry Geldzahler is the person who wrote the catalog about Charles Bell's life and work, the retrospective. And so having someone like him looking at Mr. Bell's work and saying that this is one of the, the big artists of, of my time was, was, what was quite something. And his work is now over at the Met, at the Guggenheim, at Philbrook. It's all over the world. Um, and so, we talk a lot about um, who gets celebrated in this world. And I want to say, before we watch a, a video about Mr. Bell, um, there are statues and monuments and streets and everything named for politicians and sports heroes and generals and everybody else. Um, imagine a world where artists got some of that same recognition. So it's a very special thing. I think we're on, this is a good start putting Charles Bell into the Rogers Hall of Fame and uh, we're going to have a little special thing right after the video as well. So let's watch the video. Charles Bell is an internationally known artist, renowned as a pioneer of photorealism. 
Charles earned a bachelor's degree in business administration from Oklahoma University, then joined the U.S. Navy and served as a lieutenant. After the Navy, Charles lived in San Francisco and started painting, never received any formal training in art, but studied under various master painters. He moved to New York City in 1967, worked as an accountant, and became comptroller of International Nickel Corporation. He also set up his own New York loft studio on West Broadway, concentrating on painting small-scale landscapes and still lifes, and working from photographs. He received the Society of Western Artists Award in 1968. By 1980, he had left the corporate world and became a full-time artist with subjects including vintage toys, pinball machines, gumball machines, and dolls and action figures arranged in classical poses, Bell brought pictorial majesty and wonder to everyday objects. Painting primarily in oil, Bell's work is noted for bright colors, for the way he captures the surfaces of his subjects, including glass and other reflective surfaces and for their grand scale, often 10 times life size. No one ever painted a still life like Charlie Bell did until the photorealist came along. And if you look at the next painting over here, you see the toys. And if you're looking at me, you see the scale of these paintings. So in Charlie Bell's work, which is still life, his first paintings were of gumball machines. There he was interested how light refracts through the gumball machines. As you can see, those gumballs are the size of a person's head. Uh, it's a still life like no previous artist ever conceived of doing. Louis K. Meisel Gallery showed Charles Bell paintings beginning in 1969, and Meisel recognized his talent as a pivotal element in defining photorealism. Referring to growing up in Tulsa public schools and the influence it had on his career, Charles once said, I was fortunate to grow up in a school system that taught art each year through junior high. He also credited his inspiration to summer art programs for kids at Tulsa's Philbrook Art Center and family trips to the Gilcrease Museum. Bell's works are housed in such major collections as Philbrook, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York, the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum, New York, and the Hiroshima City Museum of Contemporary Art, Japan. So I believe we are going to end with the uh, presentation of this beautiful piece that has been donated by the Louis Meisel Gallery in New York, which is going to be now hung here in, uh, in Rogers uh, for all the people to see. So it's a very really special opportunity. I am just in awe. Um, the fact that um, our school will own, in conjunction with the foundation, this beautiful piece of art um, to commemorate um, one of our former students that I think sometimes people don't know a lot about. And um, I want to thank the um, Phil Brook for also working with us. And I want to just recognize the committee. Um, we're going to find a great place to hang this. And um, it just is part of the remarkable history of this amazing place. <laughs>